Jane Lowe. I'm here at uh, Fusionopolis on site here at One North, the innovation hub of Singapore. And I'm here at the uh, Spectra new office for the launch of Quantum Networks Experience Center. It's a Southeast Asia first center. And I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Mr. Lam Chun Yang, who is the uh, CEO and founder of Spectra. And he's going to be sharing with us the latest on quantum technologies as well as you know, more details about the launch of the, this uh, new center, which is Southeast Asia's first center. Um, and also your successful uh, recent trial of uh, using the latest uh, quantum technology in enabling uh, quantum secure networks using, I understand, quantum key distribution as well as quantum enable encryptors. Yeah. So thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Jane. Yeah, thank you. So um, I thought um, before we go into the technical details of quantum key distribution and um, quantum enabled encryptors, maybe you can take a step back and just talk very high level about what is quantum technology, what do we mean by quantum future, and also the role of spectra, as well as this uh, new experience center in enabling and also exploring this uh, quantum future. Yes, uh, sure. So uh, what we mean by quantum future as we, we have it now, um, essentially quantum uh, phenomenon has been used in our daily lives already. So okay. this goes back more than 100 years okay. uh, when Einstein you know, and other great uh, physicists discovered the laws of quantum physics. Uh, what we have today in our cell phones, uh, the semi semiconductor chips, the lasers we use, all use quantum phenomena. Now, the quantum future that we are talking about, and this is uh, synonymous with the second quantum revolution, is the ability to control and manipulate each and single mm -hmm. quantum bit, we call it. Uh, it can be a photon, a single particle of light, it can be an atom. So in the past, uh, the lasers and semiconductors we use, we call it uh, bulk properties of quantum physics, uh, which is a... Cons uh, 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 ensemble of quantum uh, right. of auto atoms and, and photons, okay. now we are able to control and manipulate individual particles. And that's what's, herald, uh, that's what's interesting mm -hmm. and, what, and recently that's why we're talking about the quantum future. Mm -hmm. um, now, the ability to control these individual particles have great uh, technology implications mm -hmm. from quantum computers uh, with the likes of Google, IBM and other uh, big companies mm -hmm. building the physical uh, uh, quantum computer to quantum communication where Spectral is playing in or, or, or participating in to secure um, the current communication networks using these properties for added you know, security layer or added encryption layer. I can describe the technology a little bit more in detail. Yeah. But at Spectral, uh, particularly, uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, securing uh, the current telecommunication infrastructure against any quantum computing attacks. Mm -hmm. So now, the, uh, uh, with a large enough quantum computer, uh, you can do many interesting things like uh, solving optimization problems for financial industry uh, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that a quantum computer can do uh, is essentially it will break all the encryption, almost all the encryption oh, algorithms yes, that, right. that yeah. we have we, today. We, we want to talk about that later. Yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. So all the quantum threats that the quantum technology um, uh, may introduce Correct. in the future, right? Correct. Okay, Correct. right. So this is part of the quantum future as yeah. well that we are talking about. That's okay, right. right. Okay. Um, yeah. So for this, uh, tell us a bit more about this uh, new experience center. Oh yes. So um, I think the observation is that by and large, the general industry still have a lot of questions about what uh, quantum key distribution or quantum communication is about. Um, uh, they are uncertain about the, the technology, about the threat that's, uh, that's upcoming. So with this uh, Quantum Networks Experience mm -hmm. Center, or QNEX in short, uh, we hope to uh, inform the general industry about uh, the technologies that are already available today, uh, the threats that's coming, and ways to implement uh, mitigation strategies by right. implementing solutions okay. uh, to keep their communication and data more mm -hmm. resilient mm -hmm. uh, today and also in future against any potential uh, quantum computing attacks. Well, it sounds like an exciting uh, uh, place that uh, the public can also explore as well, if they want to as well. Uh, yes, I think we'll, we'll be open to that on, on a case-by-case -case basis. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I look forward to that. Um, yes, yeah, so earlier you talked about 
or rather, I, I introduced content key distribution and you started to talk about a little bit of the uh, technical details behind it. So can you tell us about your you know, recent successful trial of you know, securing uh, fiber networks, I believe, using quantum key distribution as well as quantum enable encryptors. Can you tell us a little bit about the details behind it? Uh, yes, definitely. So uh, quantum key distribution is essentially a method to distribute very, very securely uh, using quantum physics. Uh, encryption keys that can be used to secure or encrypt uh, any telecommunication or, or data that we transmit uh, to each other. So for this particular trial, we partnered with uh, SPTEL, uh, which is a joint venture between ST Engineering and SP Group, um, and also ST Engineering. Um, so within this trial, we demonstrated uh, um, quantum key distribution using Toshiba's QKD devices QKD uh, meaning quantum, uh, quantum key, key distribution, distribution yeah. right. Uh, QKD devices uh, to uh, uh, enable uh, the encryptors of ST Engineering to secure the entire link from mm. end to end over 55 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Now, this has very interesting uh, impact uh, for SPTEL's uh, uh, telco business in the sense that it will enable this uh, um, high capacity data center in interconnects uh, solution that they have. So essentially, if a user comes on board uh, the telco network, they could secure their communication while it's in transit against uh, any future uh, quantum computing attacks. So, uh, so we'll touch on this stuff. We'll go a little bit more detail into this 50, the significance behind 55 kilometers because I understand that for photons, yeah. right, uh, the uh, ability for them to hold their proper properties uh, uh, slowly sort of uh, dissipates over yeah. some distance. Correct. But before we do that, can you just briefly tell us, you know, how different is using quantum technology to secure fiber networks? How is, how, how is that different from the way we are securing fiber uh, networks today? Right. So today's uh, encryption uh, uh, primarily uses a mathematical-based algorithm mm. uh, to, to either exchange keys or to sec secure the communication. Now, this uh, whenever it's a mathematical-based algorithm, there's certain structure behind it. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, in the 1994, uh, there's a physicist called Peter Shaw mm -hmm. invented an algorithm, a quantum algorithm. Oh, Shaw's algorithm. Shaw's right, algorithm, right. that's right. That's yes, right. Yeah. That coupled with a large enough quantum computer mm. would be able to break this type of mathematical uh, structure. Mm -hmm. And that's the threat that we are talking about, right? The quantum computing threat. Um, so today's encryption uh, algorithms in light of uh, uh, quantum computer mm -hmm. and Shaw's algorithm wouldn't be safe anymore. Uh, by using quantum key distribution, uh, we are literally trans embedding right. the secret keys okay. into single particles of light and transmitting it across right. uh, fiber optics see, cable to the end users. Right, so we don't need the mathematics anymore. Yeah, not, right. not with this uh, structure. Oh. That's uh, difficult to imagine. Um, so much of the public key cryptography is based on this uh, mathematical sort of uh, encryption uh, approach. So yes, yeah, so let's talk about the 55 kilometers. So what is the significance of 55 and how are we going to expand or will we extend that distance? Yeah, so uh, the target of 55, I mean, it's a, it's a chosen target. So within Singapore, uh, I mean, to the, uh, the width of Singapore is mm -hmm. roughly about 40 plus kilometers. The fiber goes obviously a different route. But within the 55 to uh, up to even 100 kilometers, that can be addressed by using, uh, we call it fiber-based QKD uh, devices or okay. solutions. So this uh, photons will be sent down, uh, optic uh, sorry, uh, fiber optics that is already currently available uh, on the network. Okay. Uh, for example, in SPTEL's network, we are leveraging the currently deployed fiber optics. Mm -hmm. um, so within this uh, distance, I think we are confident to cover any two locations within Singapore, right? So that's the significance of why we, we are targeting at 55. Um, plus and minus, obviously, we can go more. Yeah. Um, um, the, however, I think uh, if you talk about international connectivity, mm, so right. communication between Singapore to London or to New York, we cannot send uh, the photons mm -hmm. uh, or do fiber QKD across long distances because the, the quantum properties would degrade o o over mm -hmm. distance and th there'll be losses. So with that, we have another solution. Uh, we call it satellite-based quantum key distribution, right. uh, which the team is hard at uh, kind of developing and planning to launch a satellite in 2024 to address this Oh, uh, exciting. Uh, problem. Okay. Right, so you'll be uh, launching satellites up into space to yes, enable this QKD. That's correct. That's oh, correct. That, right. Uh, any details that you can share about the locations? 
of what you're targeting or, or that's secret? <laughs> uh, no, 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 uh, we, we can, we can. So uh, with the first satellite going around uh, up around 2024 20, time frame, the satellite will be able to distribute uh, quantum key distribution uh, and uh, to, to perform quantum key distribution mm. across long distances, let's say, for example, Europe to Singapore. Mm. As a first project, uh, actually, we have partnered with uh, a European company called Real Group. Mm -hmm. um, and this is under a European Space Agency program uh, to develop international use cases. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so we think that would be the first Europe to Singapore uh, QKD link oh, that wow. we are hoping to achieve. Well, that's really exciting. So this is all part of this. Uh, it's really exciting quantum future that we can all look forward to. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Right, yeah. okay. Um, so earlier you touched on, you know, we, we talked about how um, the current mathematical base uh, sort of encryption will be broken by, uh, by quantum technology. And I think one of the very uh, common examples that people bring up is Bitcoin because Bitcoin's uh, encryption algorithm is based on this elliptic curve, which is also mathematical base and it will be broken uh, mm. by Schwartz algorithm. But on the other hand, some people also point out that this is not going to happen in, you know, in the next two couple of decades. So what are your thoughts? Uh? Yeah, it, it, it depends on the, the time frame, right? I, I think the one of the favorite kind of themes going around the community is you pull the experts, mm -hmm. uh, the physicists. Uh, it can range from very close, like two, three years, five years, to a very, very long time, like tens of years, mm -hmm. right? Um, but in terms of cybersecurity, that's not how we want to approach the problem. Mm -hmm. If you know that a problem is, is impending, we want to prepare ourselves early before the threat even is, is real, right? So this just improves the overall resilience of uh, the cybersecurity of any networks. Um, and by implementing early, integrating into the current infrastructure, you're just being more prepared. In fact, there's, a, there's another attack, uh, it's called a store and decrypt later attacks. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, it's well understood that today, any communication you put out there, mm -hmm. there are certain actors that are essentially just wiretapping and storing those information in some data center only to be decrypted later on when they want to oh hack right, into okay, your communication. Right, right, right. So it's a, it's a known fact. Mm -hmm. um, so so if, if your communication that you're putting out today, you're communicating using the traditional uh, methods, those information are stored by the, these actors. Ah, and then when, and when the quantum computers oh, come right, up, oh be able to go back in time and pick and choose what they want to right. read about your communication. Wow. And there are a lot of uh, data that is very sensitive for the long term, mm. right? Government information, right. IP, right, trade right. secrets, defense uh, strategies mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, 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 secrets. Wow. So uh, th there are a certain group of very high value information on mm -hmm. data or very large volume, right, that we really want to keep safe. And that, I think, you know, you don't want to take any chances. Right, okay. Yeah. Wow, okay. Well, this is, uh, thanks, for, thanks for bringing that up because I think that will really put people onto, you know, uh, to, to start focusing on how important really encrypting the data is, um, especially personal data. We, we share a lot now on so many different platforms. So it's very important that we ensure that it's uh, encrypted with not just the latest, but also with uh, eye to the future. And um, so one last question. So you talk about satellites in 2024. So beyond that, can you share with us what your plans are for the next uh, coming decade? Yes, yes. Um, so beyond the first satellite, uh, we are already planning um, a constellation of satellites oh, uh, okay. that will orbit around the Earth. Wow. And this would be, depending on demand, depending on the demand, we're observing that. As the, the demand picks up, we will be launching more satellites to form a constellation. They will optimize the delivery of uh, QKD solutions to, to users. Wow. Right, so that's over the uh, five to eight years uh, time frame. But overall, when, I, when we talk about the quantum future, right, uh, I want to also just make a point that we are still very early on in that evolution. Mm -hmm. um, um, so the, the, the future, maybe you've heard of you know, quantum internet or quantum networks. That's, that's a concept that is much richer than just a uh, secure encryption. Mm -hmm. That is about how to enable two quantum computers to communicate with each other uh, through a quantum network. Mm -hmm. And that, has, that brings about you know, many, many new unimagined applications uh, yet. Mm -hmm. right? So Spectral, we are also having our vision or sight on those, uh, the, the quantum net in the future. So building the, the core capabilities to enable us to address those opportunities when it arises. 
Right, okay. So a lot of exciting uh, sort of projects that we can all look forward to coming up from Spectra in the next, uh, what, beyond 2024 to, you know, 2030, 2040? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, I hope there'll be more good news coming up. Okay. Uh, and of course, we can always uh, get in touch with Spectra if we want to have a tour of the Experience Centre to learn more about what uh, the latest developments are. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. For right, sure. okay. So very much, uh, thank you so much for your time today, Chun, Chun Yang. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, when we next speak, uh, we can look at the, you know, satellites in the... Please, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot, Jane, for, for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you.